Now, unless you've been living in a cave, I know that you've seen this Eddie theory going around on Stranger Things Twitter and TikTok. There is a completely plausible way that Eddie actually survives his death in the Upside Down this season and will live to come back and fight Vecna with the kids in season five. We're going to break it down and go into all the details proving that this could have been their plan all along with this character. Now, honestly, I think this theory stems from the fans just not wanting Eddie to be dead because honestly, you killed off Eddie? What? When I specifically asked you no. not to? Everyone fell in love with this character a little too hard, and even though most people should have known that they were going to kill him off by the end of the season, spoiler alert, I mean, that's what the Duffer Brothers do to new characters. Just look at Barb, look at Bob. They did the same thing to Alexi and Billy. The Duffer Brothers are known for killing off our favorite B characters. Why would you let yourself get attached? <laughs> Well, I mean, that's what I tell myself each season after they kill off their next target, but this time the fans aren't letting it go. They've come up with so many Eddie Munson theories and what ifs keeping him alive and all the way from him being test subject 10. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he kind of looks like him a bit if we're being honest, but Eddie did mention to Chrissy that when he was younger, his hair used to be buzzed. You looked so different. Yeah, well, uh, my hair was buzzed. Could be just a random detail, but I don't know. The Duffer brothers usually have a method to every detail of their madness they put in the show. So people are thinking, what if his head was shaved because Brenner shaved it when he was in MK Ultra? Brenner is one of the only confirmed survivors from the night of the massacre, and do you remember who was in that room with him? Yup. 10. If anyone survived along with Brenner, there's a good chance that 10 did. Eddie's constantly considered a freak and referred to as an outcast, just like 11 and Henry, and to be honest, he didn't even find it that hard to believe that L had powers, as if it wasn't that big of a shock to him because he still has powers. And not to mention his suspiciously placed watch on his left arm, right where his number 10 tattoo would be. I'm telling you, the Duffer brothers pay attention to the details, and it's definitely a solid theory that I'm sure I could get really into and make a whole video about if you guys really want me to flush it out, just let me know in the comments. But today, we're talking about an entirely different theory, one that explains how Eddie survives his traumatic bat death in the Upside Down, and explains his important role in resurrection defeating Vecna. If you're new here, welcome to the channel, I'm Michael J, and random fact of the day is, did you know that only 12% of you guys that are watching this video right now are actually subscribed? Shout out to the 12%, you guys are absolutely the best, but everyone else, what are you even doing? It doesn't cost anything, it's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. We're trying to hit 500k by the end of the year and I want you to help us do it. Plus, I'm leaving a warm plate of fresh cookies in the comment section that are only for everyone who subscribed. Go get them while they're hot because this theory is going to get juicy. I also have been working with some artists recently to make some cool Stranger Things wallpaper for you guys to hold us over until season 5. The first one is of Chrissy and Eddie at one of his concerts. I can't help but feel like there's some what if multiverse out there where Chrissy and Eddie both survive season 4 and they get together and she goes to all of his concerts. I'm really happy with how this came out. Out, go over to my Twitter at it's Michael J if you want to use this as your wallpaper and I'm gonna be posting some more in the next few weeks so make sure you follow me now for starters I personally think it's really weird that they just completely breezed over Eddie's death for him being such a huge addition to the cast this season there's no way that they just didn't film scenes of the entire gang of Steve Nancy Mike Lucas of Eddie saving them all and dying a hero there's just no way none of the other characters even acknowledged it maybe Netflix told them to keep that last episode under three hours and they felt like they could cut some of those scenes since Eddie won't be dead for good and they just kept the most emotional one Dustin telling his uncle plus I don't know if you've seen the behind the scenes photos of Eddie getting wheeled away on a stretcher into an ambulance, but we never saw any of that. I don't know if it's an extra scene they shot for season five or a scene that was cut from the finale, but they shot that for a reason. And this theory could possibly answer some of these questions. Now, to set the stage for this theory, we're going to need some D&D context. I'm sure you know by now that the Duffer brothers love to explain things in Stranger Things by letting the kids introduce them through their D&D games and lore. And just like that, we're going to do that to explain the number one person in focus for this theory. Real quick, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is celebrating their third anniversary as one of the top mobile RPGs out there. They're constantly dropping new content, adding new characters, and even a whole new faction recently, the Shadowkin. Probably some of the coolest looking characters I've seen since the Lizardmen Chameleon Dude. They also released the Doom Tower game mode that introduced a whole new world of terrifying bosses to slay, 120 levels full of challenges for the experienced players, and not to mention
mention the newest uber monster you can go up against, Hydra. This clan boss is by far the biggest, baddest, and scariest monster to enter Teleria. This month, Raid has a ton of new things happening. They're premiering five brand new, amazing looking champions, as well as overhauling the champion vault, and they've got a huge series of Summer Splash events running all month long where you can snag some incredible skins for everyone's favorite dwarf, Trundra. And if you click my link in the description or scan my QR code here, you'll get prizes worth $30. A free epic champion, Aina, 200k silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard, so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. Now, back to the video. We're going to do that to explain the number one person in focus for this theory, Cass. Now, Cass was originally a paladin, a crusader sworn to an oath to promote and fight for his beliefs and values, which, I mean, kind of already sounds like Eddie finally not running and fighting to save the ones he loved and believed in. But Cass was Vecna's most trusted lieutenant, his right-hand man. Vecna gave Cass a long lifespan and created a sword for him, the Sword of Cass, which eventually Vecna's evil manifests in and becomes sentient and begins seeking blood in the downfall of Vecna. It eventually convinces Cass to betray and kill his master. During a ritual to ascend and become a god, Cass interrupts Vecna and attacks him. Their battle destroys Vecna's rotting tower and Cass cut off Vecna's left hand and stabbed him in the left eye. Right before he dies, Vecna banishes Cass across the multiverse to Citadel Cavicius, which was the place that Vecna used as a prison and his fortress, much like Vecna's mind space that he traps his victims in in season 4. This place was cold and dark, and in it existed dark, diffuse clouds of drifting flakes of ash, kind of like something that sounds like what Vecna found in the Upside Down that he turned into the Mind Flare. Now, in this citadel, there is a force that drains both body heat and life energy from its victims, just like the Upside Down. Each time we see people go in for long periods of time, we can really see its effects take a toll. And in here, there was said to be a very narrow path between the citadel and the outside that could be used by victims to exit if they were able to quickly do so before dying. Which kind of sounds like what we saw Max use to escape the first time she was imprisoned. Now, while Cass was here, the Force turned him into a vampire, and he donned the name Cass the Destroyer. Now, vampires are usually derived from bat bites, just like the way that Eddie died. Vecna was eventually resurrected by his followers and came back even even stronger with the powers of a demigod. But later, when he was defeated by adventurers, Cass was freed and went on to wage the war against Vecna in hopes of retrieving the Sword of Cass from the Citadel where he believed Vecna kept it. And when Vecna escaped, both realms were destroyed. Cass was nearly obliterated and the destruction just barely left him existing as a soul outside of time and space. Or in this case, a soul trapped in the Upside Down. Now from there, Cass and his powers were able to be used by binders, adventurers in the real world who were able to form a bond and use some of the powers that their host once possessed. It would be so crazy if Eddie fights Vecna and is almost killed, but is left barely alive trapped in the Upside Down, and L has to piggyback off of him to harness his powers he acquired from his time in the Upside Down or Vecna, and use them to finally defeat, you guessed it, Vecna himself. And this theory goes even further. Remember all of Eddie's tattoos? We never get to see them addressed or even really looked at close up, but if you can zoom and enhance on some of them, each one of them goes to support this theory. On his right forearm, he has a tattoo of bats? Like, come on, for real? Not to mention the death being foreshadowed since episode 1, but also, bats specifically being the thing that killed him could potentially support him turning into a vampire, or some equivalent Stranger Things iteration of a vampire. Now, all the bats are hive mind connected to Vecna, don't forget. Him having a bat tattoo might even suggest that he will eventually be connected to Vecna as well. And on his upper chest, Eddie has a tattoo of a black widow spider, which they couldn't be any more obvious with this one. This is the same spider that Henry Creel or Vecna became attached to and molded the Mind Flare into. The Mind Flare literally took the form of a spider, and Vecna in the Creel house being held up by all the vines, a spider in its web. Even Billy being killed off by the meat puppet in season 3, all the arms coming out of him, resembles the spider. And Vecna is the one controlling all of his different spiders, you could say. His generals that do his bidding for him. His monsters. Eddie also has a demon tattoo, which could represent his turning into a demon or a vampire for Vecna, his evolution from Eddie into Cast the Destroyer. Just a thought. But this next one might have the most significance. Eddie has another on his right arm. Weird that he has nothing on his left arm that's important. Huh, kind of sus. But this one is the Puppet Master, representing Vecna and his control over everyone he's used so far. Will, Billy, all the flayed, and now Eddie. Not to mention that the entire song he played right before his death was called Master of Puppets by Metallica. And I don't know how many of you actually listened to the lyrics of this song, because honestly, I was so in the moment and hyped up during this, I was just smiling and headbanging along with Dustin.
Austin. But not only does this song foreshadow his death a few scenes later, but it also foreshadows the possibility of Eddie turning into Cass and becoming a puppet of Vecna. It starts with end of passion play, crumbling away, I'm your source of self-destruction, basically saying after Eddie's passion play, distracting the bats and saving his friends, he will run to his own death and sacrifice himself. Taste me and you will see, more is all you need, dedicated to how I'm killing you. The bats literally eating away at Eddie and Vecna then turning him into Cass, saying that he will see he needed him all along. Come crawling faster, obey your master, your life burns faster, obey your master, master. This could be Vecna now in control of dead Eddie turned to Cass and him being his master. Vecna was said to extend Cass's life, allowing him to live longer, or in this case, to save him from true death. Master of puppets, I'm pulling your strings, twisting your mind and smashing your dreams. Blinded by me, you can see a thing, just call my name, cause I'll hear you scream, master, master. Just further foreshadowing Vecna being his master and Eddie's loss of control, his loss of being himself. I will occupy, I will help you die, I will run through you, now I rule you too. This is Vecna taking complete control over Eddie and helping him turn into Cass to avoid death and in turn becoming his master. And actually during the credits, the song Spellbound plays, which has a lot more of the same. More lyrics reinforcing Eddie becoming taken over by Vecna and him becoming his master. Now surprisingly enough, this is not the first time I've talked about Cass on this channel. I actually brought him up in a few other videos a while ago while I was introducing Vecna and explaining his backstory, which just makes this theory even crazier. If the Duffer brothers set us up to be talking about the person that would kill Vecna and end it all two years before season four came out and we didn't even know about it would be mental. Everyone is also saying that the Duffer brothers said that bats can't kill. They're using this as a slip of the tongue that confirms Eddie can't be killed by a bunch of demo bats, which I mean, originally when they designed the demo bats, they had an iteration which equipped them with razors on their tails, which if that were the case, they would have killed off Steve for sure, along with Eddie as well. Thankfully, that wasn't the case, but still. Unfortunately, this was an online game of telephone. Originally, in this interview with the Duffer Brothers, they were asked if Steve would survive volume two because of the demo bat bites. Robin specifically brings up that just like real bats, these could have rabies too, and just one bite and you won't know before it's too late, and then boom, you're dead. Do you guys think that these bats have like rabies? What? It's just that rabies are like my number one greatest fear, and I think we should probably get you to a doctor like really soon, because once the symptoms set in, it's too late, you're already like dead. So everyone had a little bit of a scare that they made Robin say that for a reason, and in volume two, the bites would catch up to him and prove to be a little more lethal than we originally were led to believe. But in the interview, after being asked about it, well, let me just show you the clip. I'm worried about Steve. <laughs> everyone's worried, everyone's about worried about Steve. How? lethal do we think being bitten by a demo bat is? I wouldn't worry about the bat thing. That's more my thing. I have this thing, I'm worried about bats. So anyway, that was just me. I was just have, fixating on bats at the moment. I wrote that so he might die some other way. If he's gonna die, it's not gonna be from the bat okay. bite. So like you can see, they said if Steve was going to die, it would not be from his bat bite. Which honestly, I felt like they made pretty obvious in episode seven that they weren't fatal and they saved him just in time, but to each their own. It doesn't hurt to be extra safe with Stranger Things. But them saying he wouldn't die from his bat bites just got turned into the Duffer Brothers saying that demo bats can't kill, which I don't think is the case. They also mentioned that they're not a threat when it's just one or two of them, but in numbers, they are a force to be reckoned with. And that literally foreshadowed the swarm of bats that they showed over Eddie at the end. And this could all be real and Eddie could become an undead trapped in the upside down with powers only to eventually be the key in the kids destroying Vecna once and for all, or we could be looking into it a bit much. Yeah, the Duffer brothers love to have a purpose for all the tiny details, the lyrics and the tattoos, but the tattoo designer could just be trolling us and we're blinded by our want for Eddie to come back because let's be honest, realistically, evil vampire Eddie is just not going to be the same as Eddie. The fans just won him back so this theory is blowing up right now. But if they were to do something where they do bring Eddie back as cast just to fulfill the want of bringing Eddie, the fan favorite character back for the fans, it just wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be the Eddie that they brought back. It would be Cass. Since Eddie died, Vecna would have to resurrect him and turn him into someone that he's not to carry out his bidding and then in the end, in the final battle or close to it, there'd have to be a crucial moment where they have Elle show him some happy Hellfire memories and memories he had with the gang to bring him back and turn him back into 
Eddie before turning on Vecna and killing him off himself. But you know what? They already did that with Billy. Why would they do it again with Eddie? Billy was their Cass. It could even be Will. Cass was enslaved by Vecna to do his bidding, and for all of season two, Will was literally a slave to Vecna in the real world, and he was being used to spy on the kids in Eleven. Same thing with Billy. Once he became enslaved by Vecna, he was used to do his bidding in the dimension he himself did not have access to. But you know what? It never hurts to divulge in fun theories like this, but unfortunately, I feel like this might be all it is. But at the same time, I'd never put anything past the Duffer Brothers. If Hopper can survive a death gun portal thingy exploding in season three and disintegrating everyone, Eddie can survive a few demo bat bites. But what do you think about this theory? Do you want them to resurrect Eddie? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you soon with another video, but until then, I will see you in the Discord. Peace.